Um, let's go ahead and jump into our discussion about copyright basics, uh, definition of copyright, uh, what can be copyrighted, and copyright duration. So the first item here is uh, talking about uh, a definition of copyright and basically uh, talking about permanently fixed works that we can see that can be seen or heard uh, in the ancient version or the older version of this um, definition. Then obviously those would be books or photographs or paintings and those sorts of things. Uh, in the modern age, then the idea is once a work is published. Now uh, the definition of published can be kind of uh, thrown around a little bit, but the idea is is that the author is no longer updating, so it's considered copyrighted. And then the other part of this definition is that only the copyright owner can use the work. Okay, so what can be copyrighted? Books, plays, films and movies, uh, dance, which usually most people don't recognize as being copyrightable, and music. Now, the, um, the guy that put the, the video together that you guys just saw does mention about impromptu sorts of performances. Uh, those sorts of things are considered copyrighted once they're in a fixed form, say, as recorded in a video, that sort of thing. But um, each impromptu, of course, it suffers from not being in a quote-unquote permanently fixed work. And then duration, um, author, if it's a, an individual, then it's the lifetime of the individual plus 70 years. Uh, if it's a company kind of thing, then it's 100 years. So those are the copyright basics, and we will talk a little bit more about them as we go along. So let's jump into the 10 big myths about copyright explained. Uh, this is an art based on an article written by Brad Templeton, uh, one of the founders of the EFF, uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation. And you can find this uh, article at his website, www.templetons.com slash brad slash copy myths dot html. So the first one, and I got to remember when this was first published, the uh, internet was mostly about listservs and uh, was not quite what it is today. And so uh, we have to kind of use that as a historic background to what he's talking about. So if it doesn't have, so these are the sorts of myths that people talk about. If it doesn't have a copyright notice, it's not copyrighted. Well, that may have been true at uh, some time in the past, say like the 70s. But since the 70s, the law has changed so that any fixed work, like what we said earlier, is considered copyrighted as soon as that is in its quote-unquote fixed work. So whether it has a notice or not, whether you find it with it or not, then you can rest assured that the the item is considered copyrighted. Um, next thing here that uh, is, is quite frequent, and you see this today as well as back in the day in listservs, is if I don't charge for it, then it's not a violation. And this is where people get really kind of messed up in terms of the dialogue uh, related to copyright. Copyright is not about usage. Copyright is about permission. If you have permission from the copyright holder to use the work, then you're free and clear. Uh, regardless of how you use it, if you don't have permission to use it, then it is a violation, plain and simple. Um, if it's posted on Usenet, again, then it's public domain. Again, one of these sorts of things, if I find it somewhere, then it's you know free and clear to be used. And quite frankly, again, copyright is not about how you use it. It's about getting permission. And as we have noted before, anything in a fixed work is considered copyright. So wherever you find it, unless there's a clear indication that it's public domain, then it is not in fact public domain. My posting was just fair use. We'll talk about uh, fair use, not next week, but we will talk about fair use when we get to part two um, about uh, what fair use means. If you don't defend your copyright, you lose it. So this person obviously is confusing copyright with patent law. And there are basically, I think, three different versions of intellectual property law. Uh, there's the copyright, which has to do generally with the artist, you know, artistic types of uh, materials or properties. And then you have patent law, which usually has to do with processes. Uh, you know, how things work. And then you have trademark, and uh, trademark has to do with uh, company identifications and those sorts of things. And so um, uh, trademark and patent tend to be the ones where you have to defend it or it falls into public domain or common usage. Copyright, however, does not suffer from that particular kind of thing. Once something is created in a fixed form, it is copyrighted, and then it, it, it lasts for the duration, 70 year, a lifetime plus 70 years or 100 years, plain and simple. There you go. If I make up my own stories but are based them on um, other work, my new work belongs to me. Well, this is kind of, this, this is 
this is the battleground right now. Uh, this is where our copyright laws um, are under fire uh, because it's it's becoming one of these sorts of things uh, where we have to consider the rights of the creators, who, those who created the works that are copyrighted, and the rights of the next generation or the upcoming generation and how we do have a conflict because in previous eras, copyright originally was, I believe, uh, 12 or 14 years and then it would fall into public domain and this is how culture tended to recycle its stories well now with the way the copyright laws are then we're running into all sorts of problems especially with the current technologies where you can remix music you can do all kinds of amazing and wonderful things uh, with images uh, but it runs headlong into this problem of copyright and um, if your work is clearly based on a copyrighted work, again, you must have permission to use copyrighted material. Okay, number seven, they can't get me. Defendants in court have powerful rights. Um, I'm not sure where this comes from, but it, I think it comes from uh, people kind of confusing uh, criminal law with copyright law. And generally speaking, up until the digital millennium copyright um, era, uh, copyright was a civil uh, situation where the uh, copyright holder had to be paying attention and it was up to the copyright holder to uh, you know bring uh, um, somebody to court and in that particular case if it went to court then it wasn't um, like a criminal case where you had to prove beyond a reasonable doubt but it was a lesser kind of standard and so consequently uh, you do have individuals who have been sued successfully where you know, there's similarity, but it doesn't have the same kind of um, uh, it doesn't have the same kind of problem that it would have if it were, a, let's say, a criminal case. Now, uh, unfortunately, I mean, not fortunately or unfortunately, or however you feel about the, the law um, right now uh, with the dig digital millennium copyright, um, there is there are federal offenses related to copyright. So it can be a criminal case. So you've got, you know, the civil and the criminal. It's a bit of a mess. Okay, so uh, copyright violation isn't a crime or anything. Well, it, it, it's a different kind of sorts of... It is a crime now because of the DMCA, um, but it is one of these sorts of things where it, we have to work with the uh, situation as it is, and, and be, it's a very serious kind of a thing, so we must be very careful about it. If it doesn't hurt anybody... In fact, it's free advertising. Again, this kind of goes back to number two. If I don't charge for it, uh, one is clearly mistaken if one ignores the fact that, again, copyright is not about usage for the most part. It's about permission. If you don't have permission, then you cannot use it. Um, in, in this era of Internet and, uh, and, and these sorts of things, um, you know, we can get ourselves in trouble for thinking that it's free advertising if we don't get permission. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get to part three about Creative Commons. They emailed a, uh, me a copy so I can post it. Um, again, going back to the Usenet uh, Wild Wild West era, there were those that thought that if you know you were sent a link to something, then you were being given permission. And uh, getting a link from something doesn't give you permission, uh, especially if you got the link from somebody who doesn't actually own the rights to the, the piece. So again, get rights from the copyright holder and you're free and clear. Otherwise, um, you have to let the, let the user beware. And of course, because uh, no top 10 list can actually stop at 10, then our number 11 is, so I can't ever reproduce anything. And this is one of those sorts of things where um, I want to encourage you, we have to learn to respect copyright but we learned, need to learn to work with it and not let it um, kind of determine our own creativity and how we use things. And uh, over the course of the last few years that I've been working here at Full Sail, we have been fortunate in that we've had uh, a number of students who have seen, who have wanted to use copyright works. And what they've done is they've gone to the copyright holders. Usually the best bet is not to go to the lawyers or to the company, but to go to the actual authors or creators and seek permission, you know, explain uh, your project or how you want to use this piece. And at least four times uh, we have had um, students get permission to use these copyrighted works and then go on to uh, to use the works in very creative ways. So it is one of these sorts of things that we need to acknowledge uh, the rights of the copyright holders, just like, you know, 
uh, you know, paying attention to the lines on the highway is that we need to stay within the lines. Uh, but if we get permission, then there are things that we can do that um, allow us to move forward from there. So those are the 10 uh, myths. Um, hopefully, if, if you had some uh, comments or questions come up from this particular session, then um, I welcome the comments. Uh, go ahead and post them here on this uh, blog page. 